Karen and I have another doggy haul. Not quite as big as the last one, but there's a couple of things here that I think will be really useful for me to tell you. I have to tell you, I don't know if some of these things will be repeats. I, some of them I know aren't, um, but I, I ended up in the last one not just doing what was on my list because I was like, oh, I want to tell him about this and I want to tell him about that. And so some of these things I might have already told you about, so apologies if I have. Um, the first one I want to talk about is this. There is, what, five in here, but you get a bag of 10. And these are squeaky tennis balls. And Watson isn't here, otherwise he'd come running. <laughs> but I wanted to tell you about these because when I'm at the park and I use one of these, a lot of owners are like, oh my goodness, a squeaky tennis ball. I didn't know you could get those. And they're really, really good because if you are, when I'm doing these hauls, the kind of point is to try and help anybody out that's had the same kind of issues as, as I've had with Watson or any dogs that I've seen having issues. And one of the big issues that we have, especially with puppies, is recall. And this is something that gets their attention. So that's why I bought a squeaky a squeaky ball initially, so that you, you want to get their attention, you can squeak it, they will turn round. You've at least got their attention and you can then show them a bit of chicken or something like that to get them back. But the other thing is, I really want Watson to play fetch because I want him to have exercise in the park if there happens to not be anybody there for him to play with. Nine times out of ten, there's somebody in the park for him to play with. But some of the times I go, it's an odd kind of time and there's just nobody there. And so I want to be able to throw a ball and get him to fetch it so that he's getting that exercise, you know, especially because I like to give him, you know, little treats and things. So I want him to have a lot of exercise. Um, and at the moment, he will play fetch with a little squeaky ball not so much with a tennis ball in here in the garden he will play sort of play fetch with a tennis ball but the more exciting you can make a ball the more likely they are to fetch it so it's something that i can what i've been doing in the park is i squeak it and throw it and he'll run after it but he won't bring it back he'll just pick it up and then drop it <laughs> but i thought these were really good i was going to say they're good value for money and i can't remember how much they were but they weren't crazy expensive for a bag of 10 the other reason that it's good to take a couple of balls with you if you've got room in your bag, actually that's something else I'll show you in my bag, the reason I think it's good to get loads of, of tennis balls is I, I take two with me to the park at all times because I've seen lots of, not arguments, but angst over getting a tennis ball back from a dog because if another dog picks up a tennis ball, they can become quite obsessed with it then the owner's getting in a right tears trying to get it off them um, and then they can't go home until they've got the ball and there just seems to be that kind of thing going on and I don't want that angst for myself. I want to be able to still have a ball if one of them goes missing. Um, and that actually happened at the park the other day. I take two of these in my bag and I am gonna show you the bag that I bought specifically for walking. Um, I take two of them with me. So because this lab had picked up one of them and was totally obsessed and even its owner couldn't get it back, um, I was just like, it doesn't matter. We've got to go home now anyway. And we had to walk the rest of the way across the park. I had another ball if necessary. So I think it's worth buying a whole bunch of balls like that. I did buy, I'm pretty sure I bought some balls in the last one, but they were little plastic squeaky ones, which are also brilliant. Um, but they will easily be broken in the park by labs, etc. And these ones are a bit tougher. This is one thing that I can't remember if I did show you in the last haul, but I really like them and I've bought more of them. It's the Pooch and Mark Calm and Relaxed Dog Treats and they are just little crunchy bones. Now, Watson isn't actually a fan. I'll show you how they, because we snap them in half anyway for him. See, they're little biscuits. Watson isn't a big fan of biscuits. He doesn't like anything kind of crunchy, to be honest. He does, he does now eat his kibble dry some of it because we do wet some of it um but he doesn't really like any dog biscuits other than he now likes gravy bones that you can just buy you know um you just like a pick and mix and then he likes these as well and the fact that these have got chamomile in and some nice ingredients i just i like using these for him so um i thought it was worth a mention i can't say that they have relaxed him you know calm and relaxed but anything i can do towards that helps um and they're really good treats then while we're on treats, I'll show you a couple of other things. These ones, these are the Naturals Porky Bites. And I normally give Watson the venison and marrow bone, but we're going through them quite quickly now. It used to last him a few days, but now I would say one, two days maximum. And they're quite expensive. You get two bones generally in a pack, and I think they're like five or six pound a pack maybe four pound a pack, but still it's two pound a bone and you're using one of those every day. And we use them like in the evening to lure him away from the window. It's just something that keeps him occupied for at least half an hour, sometimes an hour. Um, and because the, the reason that I like them so much is because they're not very fattening, you know, they've not got an awful lot of fat on them. 
there's not an awful lot of calories in them so you don't need to overcompensate too much by reducing their food or anything like that these are not quite the same in that they are fatty and i wouldn't want to give him too many of these because we noticed when he was only on pork when he was on his exclusion diet we would give him one of these um it did make his um it did upset his tummy a little bit not upset his tummy it just made his poo softer let's be honest i was trying to to say it in a nicer way but there is no nicer way of saying it um but i wanted to show you these because it also keeps him occupied for a little while i don't know exactly whether it is the full half an hour or not um but it, it's a, a long lasting snack and they're cheaper these are three pound 49 i think i got these it was either via vet or i think it was called fetch um so i'll, I'll look it up and put, i'll put the name of it below they're called porky bites and they're basically i think they are pig snouts i think that's what they are um let's see what it says on the back 100 percent pork but if you are doing any kind of exclusion diet and you want to give um your dog a treat or something to occupy them then these are worth considering because our exclusion diet was pork and potatoes and that's all um but what the vet told us was that you the reason he switched us to that from the prescription food that watson wouldn't eat was because pork is something that you rarely find in dog food um i have now found one dog food called arden grange with pork in it but i know because i know that watson likes pork and that's one of the things we were going to consider i don't know if we'll give it to him now but because it's not in most dog food and most treats it's something that you can potentially give your dog when he's on an exclusion diet. Now, you obviously you need to take the vet's advice and you'll know what your kind of diet is and what the point of it is. But it's unlikely they're going to have had an allergy to pork because, like I said, it's not in any of the dog foods or treats that you give them. So you can look into that and find out, have you ever given them pork? If you haven't, then it's something that you can maybe give them. And these were a lifesaver to us during that whole exclusion period because it just gave us something we could give to him. Um, and it's 100% pork and they stick. So I'm going to get um, just this is just a shampoo but it's the groom room puppylicious tearless shampoo for puppies there's so many shampoos out there and i don't know about you guys but the smell is important for me and i use we've got the anti-fungal shampoo that we use on him but it's so expensive it costs us 27 pound i think from the vet but i've now seen on viovet it's 11 pound plus postage but i need to get a prescription from my vet which is on my list of to-dos for the next couple of days but what we decided was I don't need to use the antifungal shampoo all over him. It's only his feet, his bum and his muzzle that I need to use the antifungal shampoo. So I can be a bit more sensible with it. So I bought a shampoo to use on the rest of him. And I've been using this and it hasn't irritated him. But it smells flipping gorgeous. It's just got that real puppy smell. I actually bought the spray as well. Although I wasn't keen on using that. I was going to see if he liked it. And he's okay with it, actually. Um, but this just seems to last. So you put it on and the smell of it stays with him. And we commented that like three days later, both Kev and I noticed that he still smelt when we used this one. And I also used the... I had a day in Pets at Home where I just bought a whole bunch of stuff. And I bought the value one, you know. Um, was it a value one? I don't know. Just a cheaper one than this. And there was no scent from that at all. And which is fine it's not that it's not got perfume in it though it just didn't smell um, and the smell didn't last whereas this one lasts so i thought that that was useful for you guys to know there's no reason you couldn't use a puppy shampoo on an adult dog okay um this i wanted to show you this because i bought this from holland and barrett and it's just been a lifesaver for us so it's called colon care plus and it is basically powdered psyllium husk so i went into holland and barrett actually to see if they had pumpkin powder because pumpkin is something that is very good for problems with the colon for problems with bowels etc it will dry you up if you've got diarrhea it will loosen you up if you've got constipation and i can't find pumpkin puree anywhere i've been to tesco sainsbury's asda can't find it can find it online but um it's and it's a pie filling it's not actually pumpkin it's squash so i thought let me go into holland and barrett and see what they've got they didn't have pumpkin powder they did have pumpkin seeds and i bought some of those and i am going to use them in my nutri blast in the mill in the is it called a miller there's another attachment that you can grind it up so i'm going to try that as well maybe but this is working perfectly and she she mentioned this so i quickly looked it up on my phone while i was in holland and barrett to make sure it was okay for dogs and actually it was recommended for exactly what watson has which is colitis I've tried the chappy, the vet recommended chappy, which is the shittiest food you can get, and Watson didn't want it. So I was kind of pleased, I was secretly pleased that he didn't want it because it's just 
not very nice. So we've been trying, um, oh, goodness, did I forget this all the blooming time? What is it called, what I'm taking? Flaxseed, that's what I was thinking of. We were trying flaxseed. I already had powdered flaxseed because I use it in my smoothies. So I was putting a little bit of that in his food. Um, was there anything else we were giving him? No, we were splitting the, malls, the meals up into smaller meals. We're giving him the Royal Canaan and trying to stick to that. That's what he started off on and he seems to be okay on that. Anyway, that wasn't working. He was still, his bowels weren't still as we wanted. So I introduced this. And at first when I mixed it with water, it looked disgusting and I thought there's no way he's gonna eat that. And I was right, he didn't. It was just gloopy, just was. So what we've been doing is, he's supposed to have two meals a day at this age, but because of the colitis, it's better to have small meals and often. So I sp split his morning amount into two. And then the morning I give him dry kibble. And then after his walk, after he comes back from the walker, I will give him the wet stuff. I put some hot water on it and it moistens it. And then I mix in half a teaspoon is all I need of this dry into the kibble. You're really supposed to mix it with water, but psyllium husk is another one of those wonder products like pumpkin, whereby, and for humans as well, if you've got diarrhea, this will help. If you've got constipation, this will help. But the reason that it says on the back to have it with at least a liter of water or whatever it says is because if you don't, it can bung you up, it can make you very constipated. But because that's kind of the action we're looking for in Watson, I don't wanna to go too far, I thought it's okay to use it dry. It doesn't make it so unappetizing in his food. So like I said, half a teaspoon. And actually at first when we used half a teaspoon, it did make him constipated. So I have, am counterbalancing that by giving him um, chicken as his treats, which is great because I wanted to go back to giving him chicken as his treats because he loves chicken. It's protein and it's, so it's, you know, it's gonna build him while he's still considered a puppy. Up until 18 months, Watson is considered a puppy. Um, and also it's a low fat snack that I can give him that he loves and it's a high value one so we can use it for training, etc. But chicken tends to be something that it gives him chicken bum and you know what I mean if you're a dog lover. And it also, it does make them it does get, all the food goes faster through their intestines. So I'm balancing that with giving him chicken and it is perfect at the moment. Everything is perfect. And Kev, Kev comes in and he's like, it was pooptastic or <laughs> he just always makes up some kind of word to say that, yeah, everything was really good in his morning walk. That was a long story about this, wasn't it? But I would totally recommend this if you're having any trouble with your dogs. It's easier to get hold of than it is the whole pumpkin thing for us in the UK, Holland and Barrett. I think it was about 10 pound as well, which is not crazy. Um, Cause some of these things can be, I think the flaxseed was more expensive. I'm sure it was. Finally, still talking treats. There are these ginormous things out in pets at home now, which are two pound a stick. And this is something else that is great to occupy them. Um, so this is the one that I bought. <laughs> you see how much he's eaten, but that has taken, I've given that to him about four times to get to there. Um, and they are tripe sticks, but you can also get chicken and yucca. Um, and you can get one called Monster Crunch that just looks like a big twig, <laughs> like a big tree twig. Um, is there any other type of twig? You know what I mean? Anyway, um, I thought these were really good because it's just something else that you can give them to, to leave them to, to eat it. And it is fairly healthy. Um, so I thought I'd show you those. Okay, that's everything for treats, I think. Yes. I've got some really random stuff here, but um, let me show you the stuff that I've bought for calming because some of it's a repeat. This is just a repeat for me, but just in case anybody doesn't know about it, this is the Adaptil Diffuser um, and this is the refill. These are quite expensive, but to me, it's worth doing whatever I can to try and make Watson feel a bit more calm, a bit calmer. And so this is a diffuser and the idea is it's called DAP and it's supposed to release hormones into the air, the smell of hormones that remind the dog of its mother see what it says offers a natural and convenient way to help you manage help you manage stress related behaviors in your dog yeah it doesn't say much more than that but um i don't know 100 percent whether it's working but i'm happy to give it a go you can also buy a spray and the trainer that i came around actually had the spray and he said you should try this and i said well i've got the diffuser on in the hall and i said i've also got a spray but the problem with a spray is you have to spray it and wait 20 minutes before you let the dog near it because it has alcohol which is not good for them so you have to wait for the alcohol to dissipate and generally i either forget to put to spray it in time and there's not enough time or i don't want to spray it because it that triggers 
for Watson it's the trigger that he knows I was leaving the house. When I was using the spray before I got the diffuser, I'd spray it and he'd start panicking because he knew that then in 20 minutes I was going and you don't want to get him that worked up that early. So I think a diffuser is better. Oh. By Dor West, Skullcap and Valerian. Um, I haven't used these yet. They're they're actual, I know what Valerian is and Skullcap. That's, it's, this is something that, you know, we could take these. They're not specifically for dogs. These ones are, but like I said, there's nothing in them that humans couldn't take. Um, and Valerian works for some people, not for others. This is something I might add in, but I don't want to overload Watson just now, especially like today, I've had to give him an Apoquil because he was gnawing at his paw again, which I think is because he went to daycare yesterday and there's something that they use. I was just talking to the walker when he picked him up and saying, can you smell that? And he said, yeah, it's really strong. It's, it's like the smell of tar. I don't know what it is, but whenever he comes back from this particular daycare, his fur feels horrible and he's covered in dirt like dried dirt I mean it is it isn't a dirty place and he rolls around and has lots of fun etc and I don't mind that but he absolutely stinks and he seems to be gnawing his paw so whatever it is there is irritating him so I'm going to wash him this afternoon so he's had Apoquil he has one of the things that I'm going to show you in a moment I don't want to overload him um, but I will at some point introduce these to him depending on how things are going but what I'm giving him at the moment and I'm loving is these Maxi Calm calming aid for dogs it's got taurine and isotol chamomile and L-theanine this is the one I can't remember if I told you about, but I wanted to show you again anyway, because the trainer said to me, have you tried Adaptil? The first thing he came in when he, he knew we were talking about separation anxiety, try Adaptil, and he said, and get him on something like MaxiCarm. And I said to him, I've got an Adaptil diffuser and he's on MaxiCarm. And he went, really? And he's still this hyper? Like he could see how highly alert he was, you know. Um, but anyway, he recommended these and he said they're really good. So I'm going to keep on using these. But what I love, it says 120 tablets in here. I can't remember the price, but again, it was an extortionate. But they come like this, and Watson loves them. And so you, you give them it per um, their weight, so he gets one of these. He could have two, probably. Between 10 to 20 kilograms, one to two tablets a day. So he's 15 kilos, Watson. So he could have one and a half tablets. Um, but I give him one of these and he loves it and so I can use it as a treat and I don't need to do that whole faffery that I have to do with his Apoquil which is I have to squeeze it into a bit of chicken and I did that this morning and if it's not like covered at all sides he'll sense it and then spit it out and then I have to try and squish it back in again and it's all very gruesome. <laughs> um, so it's great that I don't have to do with that with this because they're liver flavoured tablets. Um, again, I don't know whether they're working. It's very difficult to tell, but he's definitely been better the last few weeks. Okay, on to grooming. Just quickly, a couple of things. I know I showed you this last time, but I was nearly out and I wanted to let you know that I've bought another bottle. It's the Bumble and Bumble Dew Frizz. It is expensive. It's £20. I've still got about that much left of the other one, but I've been using it for quite some months now. Um, and what I love about this one, I, I mentioned in the last video that this is unscented and I feel like a lot of dogs are not suited to using scented products um, and yet that's a lot of the market is geared towards that because you want to cover up the, the smelly dog effect. But I like to use an unscented one because of Watson's allergies, so that's a given. This one is unscented. There isn't, I haven't yet found an unscented doggy serum. However, the other good thing about this is I tried to use up um, my other serums the other day and I thought I'll use it on the top part of him where he doesn't itch and I'll not use it anywhere near his feet and his bum and his muzzle where he does itch. The ones that I had originally been using before this and one of them was just a got to be one and um, what was the other one? Oh the spray argan oil. Um, actually I probably shouldn't have used that one because it may have alcohol in it. I, I lightly sprayed that and it was bothering him so I didn't use that one again. It was just ones that I was rubbing in my hands. But with every other serum it leaves his, his skin greasy and even his, his coat greasy and even when I was using coconut oil because that's something else I used to use quite regularly I'd put coconut oil over him. It didn't absorb into his fur it just made him greasy and Kev used to comment on it. With this I do I do use a fairly big puddle of it, but I rub it through my hands and then I just lightly kind of coat all of his fur and then I, whatever's left, I then kind of massage in and it absorbs and within an hour, he's got lovely, soft, fluffy fur. So I just think that this is brilliant and I wanted to let you know that aspect of it. I'm talking about a book that you might think I've gone a bit loop the loop. It's called Real Dog Yoga. Um, I'm about halfway through it and I've tried a couple of the things with Watson, but I think he needs to be a little bit older um, to get this, to, for me to be able to use this on him because I need to get the separation training done and 
I think the first year and a half until he's an adult is more about behaviours. Um, and so I'm working on his separation training, etc. But this is so illustrated and such an amazing book in my opinion. Um, and it was recommended in um, one of the animal magazines that I read. I'm trying to find a nice picture to show you. It's, it's, like I said, it's got really good illustrations, but this is also, it's a book that is like a solutions book. So it's not just a showing how showing a dog to do yoga and apparently when you read it most dog yoga or doga as they call it is just the dog isn't gaining anything from it it's just ways to entertain the dog while you're doing yoga whereas this is actually getting a dog to do stretches that are beneficial so there's things here that help behaviors so there's dogs that have had done some of this yoga and it has helped them with i think even one of them is separation anxiety but i've not yet got there with joint problems with you know there's just little moves that you can teach them and they're such small moves like one of them is to teach the dog to turn his neck to the right and neck to the left that is very very beneficial to them so I thought that was worth a mention because I'd never heard of it I got mine from Amazon um but like I said I read about it in a magazine and it's Grisha Stewart actually you know what Grisha 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 Stewart was actually recommended to me I've only just noticed that this is Oh no, that's who she's written a comment about. I was going to say that's who it's by. It's not, it's by Joe Rosie Haffenden. But it says, this beautifully illustrated gem helps you create a common bond with your dog by Grisa, Grisa I can't say that, by that lady there. <laughs> but my trainer recommended this woman um, and recommended I look at videos on the bat technique for training. Um, anyway, I thought it was worth mentioning that to you. And finally, my handbag that I bought for walking. Now, I suppose it's quite a lot to spend on a walking bag, but not if... I'm gonna use this forever. You know, I've had my other Kipling bag that was similar to this, but not quite as big. It looked as big, but it was kind of a boat shaped. So it was thinner at the end. So I couldn't, just couldn't fit everything in it I wanted to. This one, um, now what's the name? I think it might be Dina, but I'll put details of it below. I got it from Amazon. It was about 34, 35 pounds. And it's just perfect as a walking bag. I can fit everything I need in here. So I just have this hanging up and when we're going for a walk, I grab this, check my list, and I don't take my handbag with me because there's no shops that I can go in with Watson anyway, even if I wanted to. So I don't need money on me or anything like that. And I've just got this filled with everything um, that I need. In the back here, I've got my business cards for my photography because obviously I want to be able to hand those to anybody I meet that has a dog. Um, then in the this pocket here, I've got, well, this is actually a good thing to buy as well. This is a traveling water bowl. Watson always has water with me. I say with me because he doesn't with Kev for some reason, but he's always so, so thirsty with me. So I tip some water in there. I take a water bottle, just a, one of these. So I shall refill that every time I go out. Pour some water in there. Normally other dogs come up and want some water as well. Sunglasses, just some old sunglasses. I get two tennis balls in here, the squeaky kind. Then in here are, these are some treats. These are ones that um, I don't give them these very much. They're calcium, chicken wrapped calcium bones, but this packet rust, rustling gets his attention as well. Um, that's the other ball in there. And I've also got some wipes in there. So they're actually Andrex moist wipes, but I'm using them to, like if he has a, an upset bum or anything like that, there's, there's been incidents where you need wipes. <laughs> um, this is just a water spray. I probably don't need this so much now. That's for if it gets too hot, I can spray him to cool him down. And I can also fit my purse in here if I need to, because the only time I put my purse in here is if I'm taking him to the vet. I'll normally take him for a little walk before, then go to the vet, and all I need is my purse, really. Um, so I, that goes in there. Then there's another pocket at the front. There's also pockets inside if you want to put your mobile phone. And um, there's two, you know, mobile phone slots and there's an inside zip pocket. Have I got anything in there? No. In the front here, I've got poo bags, tissues, because I sometimes get a runny nose. And then this is my citronella spray. It's citronella is something that um, dogs don't like generally. The only thing is this is making my whole bag smell of it. So I'm going to wash this bag again. Uh, wash this bag once I get the replacement for this, which is I've ordered something from Amazon, which is a little handbag size I think it's called spray safe or something like that um and the idea of this is simply i got this 
I put this in my bag to try and make me feel a little bit secure when I initially was walking Watson and I'm kind of terrified of every dog or I was at the time I'm much better now and I'm okay with other dogs however there have been so many attacks we've had three attacks on doodles by staffies unfortunately um, in our group that where the owner has had to kick and punch the dog to get him off and I hate the thought of that so I thought well if I've got something like this it's harmless to dogs but it gives them that a shock enough to stop them that if there was a fight of some kind or Watson was being attacked, I could use this to spray on the dog um, that would hopefully get it off without there being any violence. So that's the idea of that. Um, and then there is another pocket in the front here where I have got things um, just, I've got some extra tissues. I've got lip balm, things that I can't do without when I'm walking. I've got my um, dextrose energy sweets in case I have a blood sugar problem like I did before, some mints and a hair tie because when it's windy um, I just throw my hair back into a ponytail and it's one of these adjustable straps it's this is just perfect if you're looking for a dog walking bag so I can't recommend that enough everything um, I hope that you guys found that as useful as you did the last one I know you guys enjoyed that last one and it just shows you a few things that are out there with me being a fairly new dog owner um, as in we've had Watson for six months I'm still learning but i'm also the kind of person that will investigate everything and all of the toys that are out there and all the different things that you can buy but also with watson having so many problems i was saying to somebody in the park that i feel like you know you always look for the positive side of something and with all of the problems that watson's had from his itching to his allergies to his anxiety to his colitis to all of that it hopefully means that because i'm somebody that researches everything i can give other people knowledge especially through youtube that will help another dog you know um, and people in the park I, i'm always saying to them oh watson's had everything so if you have any problems let me know and i do now have a lot of people coming up and saying have you had this happen have you had that happen so hopefully it will help some dogs to not be in pain because dogs don't really complain very much do they and i just i hate the thought of any of them being in pain you know so um yeah i hope you found that useful and it will also give some of us parents a bit of a break as well with things like this tripe stick it will give you a few minutes peace <laughs> which is always good so thank you so much for watching today and i will speak to you again soon